The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. Well, before we get to the message today, we wanted to just take a moment to acknowledge our senior sacristans as they are sent off. Um, they graduated all recently, and you know, the sacristans do a lot of work behind the scenes making sure that our worship experience is excellent each and every weekend. So I've got Ty, Patrick, and Kai with me today. They are all headed to some exciting new things in the year to come. Ty is going to be going to University of Utah. Patrick is going to Virginia Tech, and Kai is going to Anderson University in South Carolina. So thank you to each of you for your service. And we have a little gift for you as you go um, from our old pews that were in the sanctuary before we built this brand new sanctuary, we took some crosses. So you get a little piece of nativity to take with you. Um, won't take up too much room for you to pack and take along with you. So I have a cross for each of you here. Little piece of nativity. Again, thank you for all of your service these last few years, and God speed to you in these next steps of life. Thanks. Yeah, it's great to, uh, to send our seniors off, and we know a lot of you are, are getting ready for that as well. So it's great, to, again, the contribution so many students make here at Nativity. We, we love you guys, and we're so thankful for that contribution you made, and we're praying for you, all our college students, as they get ready for the fall. Well, we are in the sixth and final week of our series on the book of Psalms, and so far we have covered Psalm um, 119, Psalm 42, Psalm 89, and then a couple weeks ago, we looked at the most famous psalm of all, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd psalm. And then last week, we started Psalm 18, and my original intention was to do all of Psalm 18 last week, and this week, look at Psalm 34. And, um, but as I was working on the message, I'm like, no, there's too much here, and there's another really key insight I don't want to squeeze in. So I'm going to be sharing with you this key insight um, we get from the psalm about dealing with problems, challenges, enemies in life in, in, a, in a moment. But if you, know, if you like uh, that, that, uh, to read Psalm 34, you can go ahead and read it. That has been our, after, our, our second communion song. It's been Psalm, taken from Psalm 34, so you might want to check that out. All right, but we're going to be looking at the second half of Psalm 18 today. And, and just to kind of refresh your memory for those of you who are here last week or for those of you who are not, uh, I'll bring you up to speed a little bit. We start, I started the message by encouraging everyone to do two mental exercises, and these aren't too hard. The first was to think about uh, a recurring challenge or problem you might have. So talk to, it could be fear, it could be worry and anxiety about the future, regret or shame about the past. It could be spirit of loneliness or feeling of rejection. It can be financial stress. It could be just feeling overwhelmed by life all the time or, or, or often. I could be feeling stagnant or stuck or confusion, not knowing what to do, health issue, a whole bunch of lists. And I said, okay, kind of get that in your head. So if, if you were here last week, you might remember what you thought about. If you're new, pick something there. Um, and then the second part, I said, okay, I want you to reframe that and not to think about that as a challenge, but as an enemy. And then a spiritual enemy that's robbing you from your joy. And then, then we jumped into Psalm 18, and in that psalm, we, David shared a time where he was, he was in big trouble. And in fact, he, he kind of had come to the conclusion that his enemy was too strong for him. It was a strong enemy, and they were too mighty for him. But he called upon the name of the Lord. He called and he asked for God's help, and he experienced God's help in this dramatic way. And then we finished on this, this line um, that, that David said. He said, he delivered me because he delighted in me. And so God delights to deliver us. All right. So it, that's a key uh, takeaway from that psalm. But there's another whole lesson that's just really important that we need to understand 
when it comes to our, our spiritual enemies and what God wants for us. So we're going to find that as we dive into Psalm 18, the second half of the psalm today. So jumping back in, it says, For you deliver a humble people, but the haughty eyes you bring down. Now this is what I love about the psalms. They teach us not only how to pray, but they teach us um, wisdom for life. And a key kind of theme throughout the Psalms, and really maybe all of Scripture, is the importance of humility and approaching God humbly and how God helps those who are humble. And we, we talked about that last week, about how when we ask God for help, we, we, we go saying, knowing that we don't deserve his help. He deserves our praise. But yet God wants to help us. But it's humility that kind of opens that door. Now, humility does not mean, again, we have to go fearfully or afraid. No, God delights to deliver us. In fact, the book of Hebrews tells us, let us confidently approach the throne of grace. So by by saying humbly, it doesn't mean we don't go confidently. They, They go together, actually. They're two sides of the same coin. Continues. Yes, you light my lamp. The Lord my God lightens my darkness. In other words, God shows me the way. When it's dark, he shows me the path forward. Then he says this. Now look how the, 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 the psalm is turning here. Yes, by you I can crush a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. In the first half of the psalm, it's all God acting, God moving, God making things happen. Now we're going to start to see David moving, David acting. He says, by you I can crush a troop. I, I, don't, I was trying to figure out how big a troop would have been in, that David was talking about, but I couldn't find any commentary on it. So I asked my son, Max, who's a Marine, I'm like, what do you think a troop would be? And he said, that ah, sounds kind of like a platoon. And I'm like, well, how many is a platoon? He said, about 50, 40, 50 soldiers. I'm like, so David is able to take on about 40, 50 guys now, he's saying. And by you, I can leap over a wall. Before in the, in the psalm, we see that David was limited in his strength and his vitality, but now his, his energy and his vitality are coming back. He's able to leap over obstacles. He continues, this God, his way is perfect. I love that. This God, his way is perfect. The promise of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. God's way is the perfect way. And in the end, we will find that all his promises prove true. They will come to fruition if we will persevere in them. Now, this doesn't mean it's always going to be easy, that God's way is the easy way. No, it's not always the case. Does it mean we will always see immediate success right away when we we choose to go God's ways? No, not necessarily. But in the long run, God's way is the perfect way, and his promises prove true. David continues in reflecting. He says, For who is God but the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? The God who girded me with strength and made my way safe. He made my feet like deer's feet and set me secure on the heights. All right. So David goes to God for protection. For those of you who were here last week, in the, remember in the beginning, he, he uses all these images or metaphors for God. He is my rock, my shield, my protection, my stronghold. And, and David runs to God, and he stands behind God, and he's protected from his strong enemy. But as he goes there, he gets more than just God's protection. That in running to God, he also gets his strength and his power. See, just as you know, a good parent, you want to protect your kids, right? But it's not just about protection. It says you protect them, but you're hopefully you're helping them grow along the way so that they're able to stand and, and, and live their lives and grow into adult maturity, and they have the strength and the wisdom to do that. Well, the same is true with God. He doesn't just want to protect us from our enemies. He wants to share his strength with us, share his wisdom with us. Right? It says this, he made my feet like deer's feet. Again, we see here this transfer, the sharing of strength from, with, of God with David. In the psalm earlier, we talked about last week, God is described as riding swiftly on the wings of the wind. Now, David is fast. David is swift. He makes my feet, my feet like deer's feet. Again, we see the sharing 
of strength as, God, as David goes to God for protection. Next comes one of my favorite verses of the psalm. It's my second favorite verse. Shared the first favorite last week, but this is my second favorite verse. And this is the verse I hope you remember as you leave today. It says this. He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. He trains my hands for war. Last week we talked about David come into this idea that the, the enemy was too strong for him. And acknowledge in our lives, we just at, at times need to acknowledge that, that, that there, we have a strong enemy or strong enemies, and we just can't handle it on our own. And that means sometimes swallowing our pride. Right? Often what gets in the way, we have to swallow our pride and just say, I can't do this on my own. At the same time, we all kind of have a healthy self-respect, or it's good to have a healthy self-respect in which I just don't want to get in this situation, right, in which I'm living my life, my strong enemies, they, they take me down, and they take me down, they take me down, I call out to God, and he saves me. And then I live my life, but then the strong enemy comes upon me, and I get beaten up, and I get beaten up, and, fight, and then, then I come to the realization, i got to call on God, and he helps me up out of that and gets me out. And then we don't want to repeat that cycle, of just being completely and totally helpless before our enemies. And I don't think God wants that for you either. Now let me be clear, you, you can never go against your enemies without God and his strength. But again, it's not just about God protecting you, it's about God passing on his strength to you. So that as you live your life and you meet those enemies, you go into battle with your enemy with God, his strength his wisdom with you so that you can emerge victorious. God wants to train your hands for war. Now, when I talk about, you know, when I talk to other, some people about spiritual battle, spiritual war, and that topic comes up, often you, you'll get people very uncomfortable. And they'll even push back. I, I don't really want to talk about spiritual battle. I don't really want to talk about spiritual warfare. It just, that just makes me uncomfortable. And I understand that, but I always, this is why I always want to come back and quote one of the Lord of the Rings movies. I'm not a, I like the Lord of the Rings movies. I've seen them a bunch of times. I haven't read the books. But in, in The Two Towers, there's a scene in which King Theoden says, I will not risk open war. And Aragon says, open war is upon you whether you would risk it or not. Spiritual war, spiritual battle is upon you whether you would want it to be or not, whether you like it or not. And, and you, we all kind of know it. Again, try to build a business. Try to build a loving family. Try to, to do anything, and you'll feel a push against you. Well, that's spiritual battle, spiritual war. Right? Right? Try to live in the joy of the Lord and, and, and have joy and happiness in your life, and you'll feel a push against you. Well, that's spiritual war. And I think one of the reasons maybe people are, don't like talking about it is because, like, they feel, I, I don't feel equipped. I, I, I don't know how to fight the battle. And let me tell you, you're right. No one comes into this world knowing how to fight their spiritual battles or spiritual wars. That's the bad news. This is the good news. God wants to train you. He wants to train you the battles, train you for the battles he's called you to fight, both for yourself, your own well-being, for the well-being of your family, your friends, and to, to use you to bring his, more and more of his kingdom into this world and grace into this world. He, he wants to train you for that. And, and, and David says this, so that my arms can bend a, bo a, a, bro a, a bow of bronze. Right. Think of a bronze, how strong that is. It makes me think of a, of a, of a barbell, right? You, you can't bend it on your own, or most people can't, but by God's strength, you can. Now look at the change that takes place. Told, I pursued my enemies and overtook them and did not turn my back until they were consumed. I thrust them through so they were not able to rise. They fell under my feet. For you girded me with strength for the battle. You made my assailants sink under me. Now, at the 
the, again, we see the arc of this psalm. In the first part of the psalm, David is, be, is running from his enemies. They are chasing him. Now the tide has turned. David is chasing his enemies. I worked on part of this message sitting on my front porch in my house. And I read this verse, and I just smiled. And I smiled because this is the image I had. I had the image of chasing my spiritual enemies down the street, right? Of like having a baseball bat in my hand, saying, get out of my house and don't you come back again. And just like chasing them away from my house, right? Doesn't it put a smile on your face to think of you chasing your spiritual enemies rather than them chasing you? That that thing that has gotten in the way that's robbed you of your joy is robbing joy from your family or robbing you from the progress your business should be making or organization should be making it, that's robbing you, that you chasing it, that smile on your face of, of chasing fear, addiction, rejection, loneliness, worry, financial stress, that you chase it out of your life. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Not by your own power. Not by your own wisdom. God's strength and God wisdom going with you into the battle. Wouldn't that be incredible? I think God wants that for you. David chases his enemies. Now he, he wraps up the psalm. He says this, The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of my salvation, the God who gave me vengeance and subdued peoples under me, who delivered me from my enemies. Yes, you exalted me over my adversaries. The Lord lives. In other words, the Lord is alive and active in my life. The Lord is alive and active in the lives of people who invite him in for his strength and power and wisdom. And then he, he finishes the psalm. He says, for this I will extol you, O Lord. He speaks to God. Now, God, I will extol you. I will raise you up among the nations and sing praises to your name. Great triumphs you give to the king and show his mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. You see, that, that's your birthright. That's your inheritance to be exalted, uh, to triumph over your enemies because you are a king or you are royalty through your baptism. You were anointed Peace, a priest, prophet, king. And an anointed king, a royalty in Christ to triumph over your spiritual enemies. So as I was thinking about this, this the psalm and how, to, how it lands practically, I was thinking, well, what is the, the practical takeaway? And especially that, that verse, Psalm 18, verse 34 he trains my hands for war. It begs the question, how? All right. How do I enter into training? Now, in some ways, I think that's the whole Christian life, that we worship. We, we get in small groups. We, um, you know, that we even serving, I think, in certain ways that if we will kind of bring that perspective to it, I think God will train us in all those ways. But that seemed a little vague to me. So I kept thinking about it. And a passage was brought to mind um, of Mark in Mark chapter nine, and in Mark chapter nine, uh, the apostles, the disciples, are trying to drive out a spiritual enemy, but they can't do it; they fail. And then Jesus comes along, and then, of course, pretty quickly he succeeds where they failed. And then after after this event, they're alone with Jesus, and they're like, "Okay, Jesus, why couldn't we do it?" Teach us, train us for the next time we come upon the same problem. And here's what Jesus says. He says, this kind, this kind can only come out through prayer and fasting. In other words, what I think Jesus was saying is like, yeah, you, you guys went into that battle just on your own power and strength. If you will pray and maybe even intensify that prayer through fasting, God will give you the wisdom and the strength to succeed. That as you, as you seek God, it'll become clear to you what you need to do and you'll have the strength and power. I was reading a book uh, on, called Spiritual Authority by this guy, Dr. Rob Reimer. 
And he said this, When we face a mountain we do not know how to move, if we're willing to pray and fast and seek God's face, in other words, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking God not just for the answer, not just what I can get from him, but I also try to draw closer to him and seek God's face and wait on him. He will often give, give us what we need to overcome. The prayer, fasting, and listening to God's voice lead us into deeper intimacy with God, releasing the wisdom and faith we need for victory. I tried putting this into practice a little bit this week. Um, there's just an, an issue in my family, an issue in my, as a father that it's a strong enemy. I haven't figured out the right way to, to, to feed it. It's, and it, it's something I know I need to get better at. And so... Um, you know, it's a common issue. It's an issue a lot of families face. But anyway, I, but it was too big for me. And so I just tried putting in this into practice. I said, God, show me the way. Give me your wisdom. What, what should I do? And I intensified it with a little fast. I mean, I mean so little fast, but a, a very little fast. And yet, I felt like God put a scripture verse on my heart. And I, I put it into practice. It was a very, a very simple thing, not nothing complicated, and I felt it move in the right direction. Felt something shift a little bit. Now, this is an issue. It's a thing that's it's going to keep going on. It's not like done. It's not over with. But I felt it moving in the right direction. And so that's what I want to encourage you to do this week, to just ask God to show you how he wants to train you. Say, God, you know, look at Psalm 1834 and say, God, train my hands for this battle. I want your strength and your wisdom and your presence with me in it. And if, again, you can intensify it by a small little fast, give up coffee for a day or dessert or skip a meal, but see if God does not answer you. Because I believe that God not only wants to deliver you from this enemy, he wants to give you victory over it. So to help with that, we're going to, close out today as we've closed out the last few weeks and just a little meditation and inviting some time with God and maybe and some time for God to speak to us and for us to speak to God. So last few weeks you can look at your hands, close your eyes, whatever you're comfortable doing. Yes, you light my lamp. The Lord my God lightens my darkness. So maybe you want to just ask the Lord to light your way. What is the next step you need to be taking to defeat that spiritual enemy? This God, his way is perfect. The promises of the Lord prove true. He's a shield for all those who take refuge in him. Just at a moment, this moment, tell God his way is perfect. You believe in his promises. You trust his promises. For who is God but the Lord? And who is a rock except our God, the God who girded me with strength? God, we ask you to share your strength and your power with us. There be a transference in this moment. trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Father, train us. Teach us. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of my salvation. God, we thank you that you live, that you are active, involved in our lives. Help us to see how you're moving. Or your presence. For this I will extol you, O Lord, among the nations, and sing praises to your name. Great triumphs you give to the king, and show his mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. So, God, we do praise you, we extol you. God, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do, the victory you will give us as we continue to seek your face, seek your strength and wisdom. Now, if you just want to give a moment for, to say something else to the Lord or for him to say something to you.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for these words from David that you not only delight to deliver us, but to give us a victory. And we pray that we will be, we begin to put these words into action and to trust in your victory. And as we come to see you overcome these enemies, that we would come to know you more and more in our hearts and that more and more people will be drawn into a relationship with you as they see how you're acting in our lives. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.